y'all get for getting me after an uproar? Yeah. Right? <laughs> amen, amen. Well, I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord. I know that uh, uh, we just started church at Abundant Life at 1030. So they're in their worship, I'm sure, right now at the church that I pastor in Mansfield, Ohio. Uh, we've been there over now two and a half years. It'll be three years in November. And uh, I tell you what, uh, we miss you. And we love you. And we pray about you often and uh, get to see some of you sometimes, you know, because we're right off 71. So, you know, when you come into, you know, usually heading out west, you got to take 80. And most of the time you got to take 71, you know, go down through Columbus. We're right, we're right between Cleveland and Columbus. If you're ever in town, let us know. Love to see you. You can play stop. Just give me some time to let my wife know. We'll prepare a room so if you need to stay the night, we will, right? I see Archie pretty often. He actually, if y'all didn't know, one of his stops was in Mansfield, Ohio. I didn't even know that when we lived here. And so he'll like text me at 10 o'clock at night, like, hey, you want some dessert? And um, I can't say no, but I should. Um, but uh, so just, uh, we love you and I'm so glad to, to be here this morning. We brought a, a group of some of our young adults for a four. Uh, some of, we had uh, Zach and Brock were at camp this week and God just did some amazing things. I want to encourage you. I'm speaking to the choir because you're here. But so those that you see that aren't here, encourage them to get their kids here. And when I mean kids, I mean babies. I mean toddlers. I mean kindergartners, preschoolers, all the way up. Because the way that we can tell if a church is going to grow or not, if a church is going to be existence or not, is if our children are here. Because if they're not here, they're somewhere else. Right. <laughs> we want to teach our kids how to serve the Lord. This is free stuff, but I just feel like I need to say it. Church is not an option. It used to be in the day that when the church doors were open, we came into the house of the Lord. But that was a law. I mean, I remember my mom telling me that, you know, it was a law that you had to be at church. It's not because you wanted to be there. It's because you were told to be there. And it was like the first commandment, and you didn't miss it. And so the problem is there's a generation of that that sees that serving God is all about walls. And we need to teach our children it's about relationship. Serving God is about relationship. It's not about a law of what you have to do. And so we need to get it in ourselves and realize that. So that we can impart it into our children. So that they can impart it into their children. That when the house of the doors are open, it's not because I have to be here. It's because I want to be here. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love Google Photos. It always gives me this memory time lapse that comes up and you hit it and it like tells you what you've done for the entire life you've been using Google. And I will tell you, for the past six years, I just looked at it this morning when I was over in this room praying this morning. This week, I don't know if it was particularly this day of the month, but Google Photos showed me, hey, the babies are okay for crying. I don't mind. <laughs> Amen, brother. Um, but every year, at this time of the year, I've either been at either upward in camp or I've been at camp. I love that because that reminds me I'm sticking to it. So if you don't want to know what you're sticking to or what you're not sticking to, don't look at Google Photos, memory class. Right? But there's just something about staying consistent, doing the things that God's calling you to do. And you do it out of relationship. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this morning, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the fourth man. And it was interesting to talk to my young adults that we brought, talking about the fourth man. I said, so what does the fourth man bring up when I say that? And they're like, I don't 
don't know. Tried to give him a couple more clues. <laughs> like, oh Lord, I got a lot of work to do. Um, but we're going to talk about the fourth man this morning. You know, the Lord's help, I believe that uh, he's got a word for the, the church today. I'll try to be aware of time, but you know what? Well, when God just takes it, it's his. And I said earlier, I believe that there's going to be healings in the house today. I believe there's going to be salvation in the house today. I believe there's going to be relationships that are going to be repaired, uh, repaired today. And there's going to be new relationships with God started today. But you have to have a heart of expectation. Not just because good old Huggy Bear Dave is here. And we all love the scene. We're all expecting the hug. Well, everybody but Ben. I love him, Ben. I <laughs> He still likes my hugs. I'm getting, I'm like ninja. <laughs> but um, we need to be expecting the Lord to move in the house today. That's why we're here, right? That's why we come to worship. That's why we come to hear the word. Not because of who's preaching, not because of who's singing, but because who's here. Amen? Yes. So, preach with me this morning. I have a gentleman in my church named Tony, and he loves to say amen. He's my amen corner, and he's like my only one. So, I don't know why, but he is, and I love it. So, if you feel like saying amen, say amen. You want to say praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You want to say preach it, brother, preach it, brother. I'll give it to you. Amen. 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 So we're going to go to Daniel chapter 3, verse 25. And in verse 25 it says, Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. We're going to talk about that fourth man today. What's interesting is when you... When you, if you understand that story, uh, there were three Hebrew boys that were thrown into the fire. And we know the story, it was, what, seven times hotter than it normally was. And, you know, the guards that threw them in died instantly because of the heat. They, like, dehydrated. <laughs> right? And so we know it was hot. But we also know that um, they were held captive. Uh, by King Nebuchadnezzar. He had taken over the land and he took the best of the best from the people and uh, brought them in. And there were four that uh, that he took. And, and there, were, there were more, but four that stood out because they stood for something. And you had Daniel, you had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We're going to talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you can put Daniel in there. We're not really going to talk about him, but he was also in this process. And what I want to talk about is there's, there's things that the enemy tries to do to you to take you away from the Lord. Now understand these three, these three young men, they were raised knowing about God and the things of God. I'm sure that there was times every day that the scripture was that they read or were read to and they were memorizing things about what the God of Israel did from their past and to where they are now. And they went through the, the temple and the altar and these type of things and the dedication to God and prayer. And they, they were on time for prayer. They were on time for church. They were on time for the things of God because they had a relationship with God. And I want to talk about what the enemy tries to do to take you away from God. Because if you don't know yet, we are in a foreign land. What's that old song we're just uh, passing through? This ain't my home. I'm just a passing through. And as we're passing through, the enemy is trying to do things to distract us, to take us away from the things that we've learned and we've known that God is instilling into us. And the first thing, and when you look at Daniel chapter 1, and you don't have to put this up, but just for reference, Daniel chapter 1 verse 4, it says that the king, Nebuchadnezzar, he sought to change what they said. 
He sought to change their language, the way they spoke. In ancient Babylonian, three languages were used. Aramaic for ordinary business and diplomacy, Shemitic tongue, the language of historic and legal documents, and Akkadian, a sacred tongue in which most magical formula and ritual directions of Babylon were written. Now understand, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were prominent young men. The Bible says, in the sense and just interpretation, the best of the best. And that's what the enemy tries to do. Not just the best of the best, because we're all best of the best when you have the Holy Spirit in you. Some of y'all just don't realize it. So we have those filled with the Spirit this morning. You are the best of the best. And what happens is the enemy tries to come and tries to change your language. I tell our church when we give directions, we tell people, well, before I got there, they would say, we're across from, we have a Sam's Club. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Like five minutes from us. Woo! Oh, uh, sorry. 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 Y'all don't understand where we came from, and then when we came here, But they would use the terminology, we're across from Sam's Club. That's, that's okay. It's all right to say that. But the way you speak has an has a emphasis. Sam's Club is across from us. Do you see the difference? We're in first place. We're not a landmark for somebody to reference. We are the landmark. Yeah. We are the place to be. And so the enemy wants to come and change your language. He wants to change the way you speak about yourself. The way you see yourself when you wake up in the morning. And for some of us like me, it's a little scary. But that's the flesh. I'm not looking at the spirit. The flesh is like, oh, Lord, help that. But when we look at the spirit man or woman, the enemy wants to change your language about what you see. Because when you make mistakes, anybody make a mistake in the house? Yeah. Just come talk to my wife after church, please. The enemy wants to come and bombard you with things to make you start doubting because you made a mistake. He wants you to start changing your language of how you see yourself being a child of God. Well, you can't be a child of God if you made this mistake. You messed up. How can God even use you? You're a loser. You can't even do what the Bible says. Am I the only one? He wants you to change your language about how God sees you. Because the enemy wants to cause division. And if he can make you change your language about what you say about yourself, about who you are to God, it can be some bad stuff. Then I want to go a little bit farther. He wants to change your language about that heavenly gift that God's given you by speaking in tongues. He wants you to start doubting the spirit flowing through you when that happens in that heavenly language. Anybody ever get that thought when you maybe that first time God filled you with the Holy Spirit, you started speaking in tongues and you were and you felt so good. She does. We know she's amazing. I saw her worship this morning. Yes. So she's going to be my devil's advocate this morning. And I'm so excited. It's Monday morning. You know, I'm, I'm meeting up with my friends. I'm so excited. She got the Holy Ghost to the uproar. It was so amazing. And I go tired with the Lord. Filled me with the Holy Ghost. I spoke with tongues. And she 
he's like, you did what? I spoke with tongues, and God filled me with his Holy Spirit, and I feel so amazing. And here comes the enemy. Not the chief, the enemy. It says in the Bible, we're fighting against principalities and powers, right? That influence people to do things. And so the friend is like, you're weird. And then you're like, well, am I weird? Is that weird? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm going to go to another one of my worldly friends and be like, hey, I got the Holy Ghost. I spoke in tongues. And she's like, that's weird, too. And I'm like, man, it must be weird. This must be, maybe I made this all up. And then you know what happens? I stop speaking in my heavenly language. I may still love God. I still may have a desire to serve Him. But now I'm not activating the power that He's put into me. Because He wants to change our language. He wants to change our language. The second one, King Nebuchadnezzar, he sought to change what they read. Their literature. Daniel 1 4. Nebuchadnezzar sought to fill their minds with Babylonian uh, philosophy, science, astrology, and religion. He would re educate them and replace the things of God with the value systems of Babylonia. I believe in education. I think it's very important to learn. And I say that because I'm not a good learner. I can barely talk right. And I thank you for Pastor Dave for helping me. Because he's my educated friend. He helps me read books without pictures. And I love him for it. Anybody got that like comic Bible? I love that thing. I don't have one. But I've so often wanted to buy one, but then I'd be afraid of what people would think. What's he preaching out today? The comic Bible. Jesus! Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Christmas is coming. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, you know, for my birthday, my wife bought me this real nice black leather bonded Bible study Bible. I'm like, <laughs> I love it. I love it. But the enemy wants to change our literature. The things we read, the things we invest into. Men, we're the priest of our homes. We are in charge of what our family does and doesn't do. Single mamas. You're the priest of your home. You're in charge of what your kids do and they don't do. You're the example. And if we let the enemy come in and start taking control about what we're teaching our children, we're going to be in trouble. Because that's what the enemy wants to do. And I'm going to take this step further, and my kids are going to roll their eyes at me. This whole front row is probably going to roll their eyes at me. And I'm not going to, I don't want you to think I'm a hypocrite, because I'm not, because I have this stuff too. Social media is going to be the demise of our young people that's going to change their ways away from God and into the world. I think it can be a good tool. I think we can get messages out there. But even myself, I've deleted TikTok off my phone because I just, I know I can't stop. And when I'm scrolling through, I'm just like, Ooh. and there's some cute videos there. And then there's some videos that are like, whoa, I love you. Reduce the time that you're on your phones and pick up the Bible. Right. Amen. 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 Amen.
again. And it's not because I don't love me. It's because I love him. Because what's going to happen is, and I heard this this weekend, I may not say exactly right how it said, not as elegant as the preacher. But if we, if this generation, we tolerate things in this generation, the next generation is just not even going to be existing anymore. And if we don't put our foot down, our feet down, because I believe in what I told him, I said, listen, you sacrifice your time for God, God will reward you on the ball field. He will bless you. And I believe it. But the world is trying to influence our lifestyles and what we do to take us away from the things. Oh, but pastor, it's just one Sunday. Well, one Sunday turns into two. Two Sundays turn into three. And then before you know it, you're a CEO, a Christmas Easter only Christian. And then that may even fall off pretty soon. And then when we look at the church and we're like, where are all the babies at? Well, because as adults compromised, our children think it's okay. And if you have children, you know they take it a lot further than you ever did. Because you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. The enemy's going to try to change your lifestyle. He sought to change what they stood for. He sought to change what they stood for. Their loyalty. Daniel 1, 7, the three young men had names which reflected their Hebraic heritage and ties to God. So their Hebrew names, Hananiah, God is gracious. Azariah, God is my help. Mishael, who is like God. And he changed their names to gods of, the gods of Babylon. Belshazzar, Bel will protect. Shadrach, inspired of a coup, which is the moon god. And then Abednego, a servant of Nebo, which is Venus, uh, Venus. And then Meshach, who is like a coup. And Belshazzar was Daniel. They're going to try to change your loyalty. Put you in places where you start questioning the things about God. Because I'm the king. I'm the ruler around you. And I'm going to try to make you compromise the things that you have been taught to stay away from. That's what the enemy's going to try to do. Get you to change your loyalty. To start thinking outside of the way God wants you, that you need to be thinking. Just a little wedge in there to kind of just take you off track. We live in a world today that it's all about feelings. I'm offended, so now we've got to change the stuff for you. Right? I'm offended. I'm offended, Pastor, wearing this nice Hawaiian shirt. I met this sweet lady today before church, and she's like, you must be from Florida. I'm like, no, I'm from Ohio. And she's like, oh, you must be one of those. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I love it. It was awesome. I am one of those. I am different. I'm here to turn this world upside down. Amen. And he sought to change their God. He sought to change the God. The Babylonians worshiped many gods, including the king. It has been proven over and over that the God of the Hebrews was powerful, and this posed a threat to the king. The image was designed to test the loyalty of the Hebrews. Why were they thrown in the fire? Because they wouldn't worship the king with a little K. Because they worship the king in all capital letters. Amen. Amen. They were in exile. Even though that they were able to move 
around and do what they wanted to do. They were still in shackles. They were enslaved. They didn't have freedom. The enemy tries to get you into a place where he wants you to feel like you have some freedom. Like you have some liberties. Like I can walk across the street without getting in trouble. I got freedom. But there's only a point of how far the enemy will let you go. When he's influenced the things in your life to keep you away from the things of God. And even us as Christians, we are prone to the enemy. When the enemy starts speaking these things and tries to change our language and our lifestyle and the things we do, and we just let that little splinter of compromise in, and we don't take a hold of it in Jesus' name and rebuke it in Jesus' name and get it out of our thoughts, it starts causing this divide from God. And then before we know it, we've fallen away. still there. Away. And then you're wondering where God is. Right. Yeah. Come on. But you're hiding in the closet somewhere. Right. Because you let something get into you that you didn't take a hold of and get rid of. It says, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Ooh, sounds like a nice fall day. Sun out, wearing his white shirt. <laughs> and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. I love this. <laughs> Anybody ever play hide and seek with kids, like little kids? Go hide, I'm going to count to ten, and I don't want to see you, I'm going to come find you. And you hear him like, you know, hiding, giggling. <laughs> right? <laughs> and like, I can't find you. I want to go. I love this scripture because this, like, this isn't just something God decided to do one day. I mean... And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. It is something God did. Not just once. He just come in in the garden and be like, man, this is, my creation is beautiful. And it says he came looking for them. Now God knew where they were. It wasn't like, I don't know where they are. What they hid from him. So what that tells me is that God would come into the garden and he would walk with them. And he would fellowship with them. That's a, that's a lost word right now in the church. Fellowship. Fellowship is, in case you don't know, when we get together and we hang out. And we may have some food. And we may talk a little bit. And we may play some games. Doesn't that sound like fun? Everybody thinks fellowship is the F word. I think it's a bad word now. Well, that's an old word. Don't use that. Well, that's why life of the enemy. Because if he can tear us apart and divide us, we're not going to be strong. And so God came into the garden and walked with Adam and Eve and looked at the creation, enjoyed it together, and they had a relationship. But we know what happens, right? They ate of the fruit. And they were told not to. And it caused division in their relationship with God. And because division happened, they realized that they were naked. Their purity disappeared. And they hid themselves. And God is so full. Because I love this part. Where are you? He knows where they are. But because there was division in relationship, they hid themselves. 
God didn't hide them. God didn't kick them out of the garden. Not yet. He didn't do that. They did that. Right. I'll let Pastor deal with this. If this is David, the theologian type mindset. I almost wonder if God called for them. And they did hide. But then they came out and said, Lord, we're sorry. We ate of the fruit. I'm sorry. I don't read that in the Bible. I don't see a heart of repentance. What if that would have happened? Would we have what we have today? Would we be living in a garden somewhere in freedom and relationship with God? I don't know. That's just where my mind goes. Sorry, that was free. But they hid themselves, realized they were naked, and they took themselves out of relationship with God. We also find in Exodus uh, chapter 20 and verse 19, you find that Moses is talking to the people and God, he had been with God and he came down and gave instructions to the people and he told the people, come with me. Come with me and visit with God. Now God did come pretty pretty crazy this time because it was like thunder and lightning and like it was some real powerful stuff. And the people were like, no, 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 no. We don't want to deal with that. You go talk to God. The people hid themselves from God again and took away the chance of having relationship with the almighty creator of heaven and earth. Because of fear and because the curse of sin kept them from moving into relationship with God. I don't know, you, you probably don't know this, but Pastor Dave and I, we have a phone call every Monday and we talk. And Pastor Dave and I and Denise, we've known each other for a long time. 20 plus years. And there was a time that we had been out of contact Doesn't mean I didn't love him. Doesn't mean I didn't appreciate him and who he is. But our relationship was separated. And so the only thing I had relationship-wise with him was the time I was close to him. Which were good memories. And we had great times. But for many years, there were years that we didn't talk and we just kind of did our own lives and we were in our own place. And even though he's my friend, there was something that was missing. Because I believe in the house we can all say, yes, I love God. I remember that time when God blessed me and he touched me and, and I gave my life to him. And I remember that time, that mark, that benchmark. But there's been distance because the enemy has come in and changed your language. The enemy has come in and has made you separate, a lifestyle. He's come in and changed your literature, your loyalty. The enemy has come in and separated you. And it doesn't mean that you don't love him. It just means you're not in love with him. Because when you love somebody, and you really love something, you will make time for it. You will make time for it. Praise and worship. So why did I title my message the fourth man? The 
reason why I titled my message the fourth man is because one, the king said, didn't we only throw three in there? <laughs> yeah, we did. Well, then why do I see four in there? And their bondages are gone. And they're in there having a party in the fire. I don't get this. Four of my guards just died because the heat's so hot. But these dudes are like, Woo. man, you need to get part of leadership in here. If you're not part of leadership in here or doing something, you need to get involved. We were jamming this morning, doing little thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, it was awesome. I was, I was giving scripture verses this morning, and I heard the music, and I ran down those little steps there with my little legs, and I went out there, and I was like, move out of the way. I'm like, praise Jesus. Listen, God in a breath could have went and blew that fire out. God could have caused a rain to just pour and put the fire out. Uh-uh. Our God is a relationship God. And he didn't want to miss the party. You're like, what, party in a fire furnace? Absolutely. God wants to be your friend. And understand friendship though. Because the thing about friendship isn't just doesn't just mean you let your friends just do whatever they want to do or you just follow them and do whatever they do. That's not friendship. Friendship is being able to celebrate with somebody. Friendship is the availability to cry with somebody. Friendship, the availability to give them the hard conversation when they're not in the right place. Well, that's not very good of a friend. Well, if you're a true friend and you do it in love, it will be felt in love. Yeah, it may hurt a little bit and it may mess you up a little bit, but if you're a real friend and that person's a real friend to you, it's only going to make your friendship stronger. God in heaven robed himself in flesh, came to a cross on Calvary. Jesus had to choose to take the cross. Lord, if it be your will, take this from me. And he chose to come to the cross. Because through all eternity, through all the mess that was going on, Jesus, God, wanted relationship with his people. He wanted something, in a sense, tangible with them. But this world's messed things up because friends today backbite and talk about you and you tell them something in confidence and then they go tell somebody else and they post it on Facebook or whatever. Daddies mess up with families and are mean to their children and do other things. Mamas are leaving homes and you know and, and leaving their children just abandoned. The enemy is changing the way things should be. And what happens is when God comes and says, I want to be your friend. I want you to confide in me. I want you to trust in me. I gave Jesus the sacrifice on the cross for you so that you could come and live eternal life with me. Come. But we've been so brainwashed from this world that it's taken us so far from the things of God and our mindsets and our understandings of how things are because our perspective of what we see here on earth, we reflect to God. And because people can't be true and honest, God can probably never be true and honest. Because my family's jacked up, God's probably jacked up. 
That's not God. God is pure. God is holy. And He wants a friendship with you. God didn't come just to save you. That's not the finish line. The finish line isn't the fact that you just accept Him into your heart and you let the Holy Spirit come in and you're like, yeah, my life. I feel good. <laughs> that ain't the finish line, y'all. The fourth man wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to inspire you. He wants you to use the gifts that he's given us. Because so many of us are sitting on our hands and filled with the Spirit and we're not doing anything about it. How awkward would it be? In fact, we're going to just make this real awkward. Can you help me make it awkward? You? Are you okay with that? Come on, let's make this awkward. Come on up here. You just stand right there. Wouldn't it be real awkward if I just had him stand in there while I preached all morning? I should have thought about that about half an hour ago. And he just stood there. Wouldn't that be weird? Well, you're like, no, you're Dave. We know. <laughs> for you, no. Maybe for Pastor Dave, yes, it would be weird. For you, no. But it'd be a little weird, right? You would probably feel weird. You feel a little weird right now? A little bit, maybe. Like, yeah. So what do you what do you think when you have the Lord in your life? And we're walking in life together. God's with me, says he's in me, and then we come over here and we see a friend, Ellie, I am jealous, just so y'all know, for years I asked her, I love her though, I knew it was in her, hey Ellie, how are you doing today, good, oh that's great, life going well, perfect, yeah, awesome, great, nice talking to you. Hey, how are you doing today? You having a good morning? Love them babies. It's so cool, right? Love you strumming on that guitar. Wish we had a campfire. Some s'mores. We walk around with Jesus by our side. And we don't introduce him to anybody. Because we let the world influence us. Yeah, I love him. He's done a lot for me. And I thank him. But you know what? We may not be that good of friends. Because I won't even introduce him to anybody. Now when you love somebody, you're like, check out my brother Ethan in the house. Woo! Yeah. And you got to be the full skin world. You know, he does say, I just ask him, I want you to come up here. Right? Oh, man. changing our mindsets. Not the mind that you love God, but it started corrupting you little by little. And when I say you, I mean me. I'm not, you know, it's like the point fingers, there's three coming back at me. I get it. But Babylon has corrupted the church. So we're embarrassed to even introduce Jesus to the world. Because We've stopped reading our Bible. We've stopped fellowshipping with him in prayer. Oh, I can't fast, Pastor. I got, I got some cool body stuff to keep up here. Let's all stand.
Everybody hold up your four fingers. What are you doing with the fourth man in your life? Are you just in the crowd, looking in the fire, and looking and being like, man, there's a party going in there right now. I know we only threw three in there, but who's the fourth dude? That's right. Who would be willing to jump in there with them? Are you like, there's a party in the fire, let's go! What are you going to do with the fourth man? What are you doing with the fourth man? I said earlier, we have to come into the house with expectation of what God's going to do in our lives. And I believe that there's people here today that has left Babylonia Babylonian affect your life. And it can be little or it can be a lot. But the amazing thing about our friend, Jesus, is he doesn't hold grudges. Now your friend on earth may, but he doesn't. And all he wants you to do is get out from underneath those rocks where you're hiding and just be like, Lord, here I am. I'm sorry. I know I've messed up. I know I've stepped far away from you. I know I've been hiding in the closet back there in Denise's office. But God, here I am today. Because I want to make things right with you. And I know I'm not going to be perfect. And I know I'm not going to do everything right. I might not even have the words to say to a king, but I'm just going to say I'm sorry. And then I may just say the words hallelujah because I don't know what else to say. Because I've been far away from you. Because I've not been having conversation with you. Because when you're not talking to a friend, it's hard sometimes to pick that conversation back up again. So Lord, can we, can we just start over? Can we just erase, can you just, can you just take care of all the junk? Can you just remove it from me? Can we start over? Can I, can I, can I get back what I felt years ago when your spirit moved over me and your spirit just flooded in me and there was so much joy about it, Austin, like fire burning in your bones, things you can't contain and you can't control. And then the Holy Spirit starts speaking. And then you just can't help it. And you may just start patting your foot. And then this joy comes over again. You may just start jumping a little bit. You're like, man, this is really out of character for me. But you know what? Jesus is in the fire doing the party dance with me. Because I'm free. Amen. Amen. Yes. Who wants to be free this morning? Who wants to be free this morning? Just full disclosure, I'm just a regular normal dude. I'm nobody special. <laughs> well, okay. I told my wife this weekend, there's things I need to do in my life that needs to be better. So don't think I'm just like speaking to you and thinking you all are hypocrites and you know, no, no, no. Because there's things I mess up too. And there's times that I step away and I hide behind the rock. But it's what you do when you're behind the rock and the Lord is walking in the garden saying, Hey Dave, where are you? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I have a choice. Do I get up and be like, Lord, I'm here, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hide from Forgive me. 
Or do you stay behind the rock because you may be embarrassed of what somebody else may think? Because you have a reputation to hold. Because you're in charge of some ministry and you know you don't want people to think that you're weak, that you have it all together. God is calling us to a different place. God is calling us to an awakening of the friendship that he wants to truly have with you. Not the friendship, you got to understand, not the friendship of what you think like your buddy beside you, friendship. Uh-uh. It's a different kind of friendship. Because it's a friendship that will never leave you and will never forsake you and will always want the best for you and will challenge you and will be honest with you. That's what God wants in the house today. So as they worship, Pastor Dave may come, I'm not for sure. But as they worship, if you feel in your heart that God is calling you to that next place of relationship with Him, come to the altar. If you've not had a relationship with God, this is like the first time you're hearing about this, and you're like, man, I really like that dude's white shirt. But man, he was really speaking to me today. Come. Come and, come and just, just check it out. Find out for yourself if I'm telling the truth or not. Come. And if you're in that place again where you're like, man, I'm good. I feel like I got a good relationship with God. I feel like I do these things. Well, let me encourage you. There is more. Always more. Friday night, the speaker talked about God, how he weighs the world in his hand and you know just how our minds is just so hard to grasp just how big God is that he would come and basically minimize himself on this earth to sacrifice everything for us that's what he did so we're going to sing this song I'm not a beggar get people to come to the altar. But if God is leading you, He's going to meet you. Hear this morning. Let's worship with Him.